Hello guys, today I'll be showing you how to create a glowing metal effect in Cinema 4D Redshift using vertex maps. Everything will be done in the material and in the vertex maps using um, fields. So it's a very easy process, very simple, and the effects are quite stunning and can be animated if you want to um, make the glowing metal change over time. So to start, let's select our geometry. Go into select and set vertex weight to zero. Here in the tag, when we select use fields, we get this extra box. We can add a capsule field. I'll add a capsule field here. We can see that the field takes effect when this turns a different color. We can scale this. We can scale fields using normal controls. Left click to scale one axis, right click to scale all of them. Something like this. We can control the fall off using a curve as well. To add a bit more contrast between the high and low values, we can apply the curve in such a way here into an S shape. Can delete the fall off as well. Not delete, but scale it down. When we're happy with the shape, we can go into our material. And in our shader graph, we want to type in vertex and select the Cinema 4D vertex map node. Drag and drop it in. And then select your tag to your geometry. Hold that and drop it in here. To see if our map is working properly, we can correct, connect it directly to the output and preview it in render engine. And we can see that it's working fine. It's working essentially like a mask. Any areas that are in the field turn white, any areas out turn black. So to get the emission to work, we're going to have to change three parameters, the base color of our material, the emission and the metalness. I'll show you why we have to change the metalness right now. So to change to get our color, we need a color constant. And we need a multiply node as we'll be multiplying the color with our mask. Connect both. Let's preview. It's working as intended. So we can connect this to our emission. Now our emission value is at default one. When you change it to 10, you can still see that there are parts. It's as if the emission itself was behind a mask, but these, this high contrast area is because of our metalness value. If we remove our reflective metalness, not roughness, metalness, you can see that these artifacts completely disappear. We can easily control this parameter here, this change, by simply decreasing our metalness value where the mask is active, where we want the emission to take place. For that, we need another multiply node. So we take our metalness, which this one's our metalness, input that into there. We also need a range node to invert our mask. Input the range into input one. Let's preview our metalness value. So right now let's invert our mask and let's lower down our minimum range for the input. So it's almost black where we want the emission to happen. Not 
halfway should be good. Now we can input this into our reflection metalness. Now it's starting to look a bit better. The last thing we have to change is the default color. Let's add a bit more space. And there was a bit of a lag. First node we're going to need is a color mix, as we'll be overlaying the color of the emission over our base color of the texture of our material. So our color, our emission color, goes into input one. Our vertex map goes into mix amount. And our base color, our material base color, goes into input two. Oh, wrong way round, wrong way round. Our base color should go into input one. And our emission color goes into input two. Let's preview that if I got it correct. Yes. Okay. So we can input that into our diffuse color. You can see that much more color has come in to the areas where we've got emission. We can also control how we want the mask, the emission to be uh, distributed in terms of values by using a bias node. So we can input all these into our bias. Move the mix amount into our bias. And here basically we can control how we want the emission to behave in terms of either ends of the spectrum, whether we want it to affect more of the lower or higher end of our values in our mask. You can see this is a nice way to control our emission. Changing the color of our constant will also have quite drastic, quite a big effect. If we change the saturation down, you can see that increases, it becomes, you could say, more hot. So there you have it guys, that's more or less how to get a nice glowing metal effect in Cinema 4D Redshift. I'll be doing a follow-up video of how to get the same technique in Houdini, but using attributes. It's a very similar process and vertex map in Houdini is essentially the same thing as attributes. Attributes can be used as vertex maps and um, either way round. So stay tuned for that and I hope to see you around.